Hey, what's up guys, Bobo Rail here, and today I'm starting a brand new series of videos based on the cassettes, which I'm calling the Literary Analysis. So I'll be taking the transcripts of each cassette and breaking down the devices and diction of each one to try and reach a deeper meaning slash understanding of the story. If you think this sounds a lot like your high school English class, then you're exactly right, because that's essentially the same process, and that might leave you wondering why that's important. Well, I have a great deal of appreciation for attention to detail in writing, and there's undeniably deeper meaning behind these cassettes than what's on the surface with Freya's journey, and I hope through the duration of this series to reveal that deeper importance and make it more easily understandable to those who didn't read very closely and or just didn't care about them to begin with. So with that out of the way, let's jump into this literary analysis number one, which is a combination of cassettes number one and two. Now, after such a long intro about the factors of this series, I should say that cassettes number one and two are combined here because they don't have much in terms of devices individually, although they do set the stage for the rest of the plot and they define Freya's early characterization and personality, which will gain or add meaning to the story later on. If you'd like to hear all of the cassettes in order, I will have the audio for all of them linked below and the transcript with annotations for these two right below that. So this first bit characterizes Freya as impulsive, irrational, and quick thinking. She's willing to take on targets much bigger than herself, and she has somewhat misplaced confidence because of how young and cocky she is. Now obviously this is quickly subsided when she realizes the consequences of this, but it's important to note Freya's perspective and behavior at the very beginning of her journey, as it will help us understand how and when she starts to change as a character later on. Now a little after that, we learn about how she found the cassettes. Despite mocking and being judgmental towards Adam, his perceived value of the cassette player rubbed off on her and made her grab an item that has very little survival utility. I view this as an example of how Freya still sees the importance of sentimental value, and a mix of her curiosity and wanting to personally hurt Adam made her take it. This idea of wanting to cut him deep emotionally is reinforced in the next section, where she views this emotional harm as payback for the physical harm that he caused her in the duration of the fight. After that, she is finding the comfort in the fact that the sentimental aspects of humanity still exist in the world as dark as the nuclear apocalypse, which to me mildly foreshadows her future obsession with these tapes. That marks the end of the first tape, which I view as the weakest of all of the tapes in terms of literary devices, like I said earlier, but number two definitely gives us a bit more to work with. To start, Freya treasures all of her pre-war relics and knickknacks. I see all of these items that she's lost as symbols of her innocence, because of their bright colors and in the case of the troll, it's a toy that's played with by children, and it being named Loki after the Nordic god of mischief definitely reinforces that idea. Innocence and the loss of it is a major reoccurring theme throughout Freya's overarching story. And I think the significance of this motif is to make the story feel more relevant to the human condition as a whole and related to the concept of growing up and coming to terms with the cruelty of the real world. Moving on to the next section of the story, here she starts to pick apart Adam's cassettes trying to find his weaknesses, which are rather apparent as Adam is a pretty morally corrupt individual. Either way, she basically just makes fun of him and calls him a loser. So that's not that important, but after that she emphasizes that her current shelter in the van is completely temporary and offers little to no security. Here I should point out the detail of the curtains could be very symbolic. In literature, red has a lot of meaning as a color and my interpretation of it would be the violence of the world contrasting in comparison with her innocence represented by the white side of the pattern. As always, that could be a stretch, and there is always the possibility that a curtain is just a curtain, but there are enough examples of definitive and profound symbolism later on in the text that makes me think otherwise. This last section is pretty important, where she says that she wishes she killed Adam in the heat of the fight, which to me tells us that Adam is in fact not dead, and I would guess he'll be a reoccurring character in the cassettes of the future seasons. She then restates how she feels very insecure in her temporary living conditions and is thankful for her book, which will provide essential survival skills for her moving forward and will start her infatuation with the traditionally Nordic religion. So that's it for the first two cassettes. I'll be covering every cassette until the end in order, but I'd love to hear some feedback from you guys on the series to see how interested slash how much you're invested in the deeper meaning of this text. 
It's not that glaring with these first two, but I promise that especially in the ones moving forward, there are a lot more symbols, motifs, and illusions that have more airtight evidence to back them. Anyways, that's all I've got for you guys today. This has been Bobo Rail from the Christopher Beast channel, and I'll catch you all in the next one.